see, a lot of people don't understand that Christ tells you how to do everything. The Bible tells you how to do everything. You know, in Philippians, they line up with scripture. I know how to be a base. I know how to suffer hunger, be hungry. I know how to be content with things that I such have. You see, faith with contentment, prayer with contentment, it's simple, it's sweet, it's easy. You know, like, I can't lie to you. I love music. I'll be like, Lord, when are you going to help me make music again? Then you'll, he'll bring you back to reality. Don't you, don't you know I know what's best for you? So even if I don't make a, end up making music again, ever in my life, I know God did it because it was best for me. I can try to go out there and make it happen myself. I can do that. But that's me. That's me doing it. But if I just wait on the Lord, what's right for me and what's right for you will land at your foot, feet. You understand? It will. You know, even while I work now, I never put in the application there. It just landed at my feet. You understand? You know, a lot of things in life, we break our necks trying to pray to God about certain things and certain. But the thing is, we are, we don't like to hear not there or not here or not that. We don't like to hear no for an answer. We are stubborn. We think God is a genie in a bottle that whatever we say, he's going to do. You understand? But like I told you the other day, I was doing a video in the afternoon. Remember when you ask for certain things? And you know why God wants your prayer life to be simple. Now watch this. I'm going to conclude this soon. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to combine these two messages into one. And you're going to realize why you need to have a simple swell life. So I mean prayer life. Simple swell life too. <laughs> but um, you know when you sit down and you start saying this and that and that and that and that and that. And that right? You got God's listening. God listening. Then you got somebody else. That's out there. Now listen to every word you speak. Every prayer that's not according to God's will. And the devil is out there listening. And he's going to put it in front of you. Because he want to play God. And he's going to put that open door in regards to some things that God doesn't even want for you. You see, you praying for certain things. And when that door opens, sometimes it's not God. This goes with testing the spirits too. So if your prayer life is simple, our Father, okay, basic. The devil cannot feed off that at all. First of all, he can't feed off because it's a prayer from Jesus Christ himself. He can't take your words and twist them. You know, I was thinking about the bad dreams I had last night. Maybe something I said out loud. Do you understand? But I, I can tell it's because it feeds off my fears. It was that kind of dream. You know, so I'm like, okay, block that out. Bring that into bondage. That can't be God. I'm not saying God can't give you uh, enlightenment through a dream. Yes, he can. But the devil can too. And if it causes you to stress and causes you to worry, don't worry about it. But your prayer life is simple. Do it. I'm telling you, man. You keep the devil off your back. You know, uh, I, I hate to bring this up, but I'm gonna break it up. Like, I recently separated or uh, whatever going on in my marriage right now. I remember my wife used to argue with me and be like, "I never see you pray. You a hypocrite." Hmm. Wow. And I'd have read these words to her time and time again. But I'm a hypocrite though. Because you never see me pray. I'm just, I just want to throw that out there. A lot of people got it all wrong. They think you're supposed to be out there and let the world yeah, glorify God and how you act and how you walk and how you talk. And the things you do. And you spread this word in and out of season. It's simple. Whenever you feel the need to do so. But as far as my prayer life. As far as how I fast. I don't have to tell nobody that. I don't have to broadcast it. God has said on my mind when to do so. You understand? God knows what's best for us. That's why Jesus gave us that simple prayer that takes what? 10 seconds or 15 seconds to do. It's over with. That quick. 
I'm not saying don't talk to God. Yes, talk to him about all your needs, but be careful. He said, let your words be few. Draw more closer to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools some of their mouths. Lord, I promise you, if you give me this, I won't do this. You're like, okay, we'll see. We will see. Let it be simple. You know, I didn't realize the thing in this life, man. I never say I stopped doing nothing. Because I don't know the future. I don't. I might go on breaks. I hate hiatuses. But as far as, uh, you know, it's, I'm not God. And I don't know what he has prepared for me. But I know I trust him. And that's the thing. We got to learn to trust God. We got to learn to not lean on our own understanding. We learn how to acknowledge him. And how do we acknowledge him a lot of times? We read his word and try to enact his word in our lives. Jesus summed up so many things in chapter 6. So many things. How to pray. How not to pray. How to give. How not to give. How to don't sound your own. Don't be like a hypocrite. Don't broadcast what you do for people. All these things. And then yet, we got these people just having itching ears. Thinking people are led in the spirit. And they're preaching. But you can't be led in the spirit and preaching against God. What God says. Haven't y'all figured that out yet? If it goes against the word of God, it's not God speaking through them. That means they are false. That means they are false prophets. That means they are false teachers. I gave, a, I gave you a whole video in regards to the order of the church. If it's not in order like that, it's not of God. Why? Because that's what the word of God is for. For reproof. For correction. It's for that. It's like, hey, get back to the basics. Y'all losing track. Go read your Bible some more. Study to show yourself approved. Do you understand, people? I always do. I got a saying. I'm not perfect by no means, but I'm going to preach this gospel exactly how it's preached. Do you understand? I'm not going to convert the gospel to my imperfections to make things seem right that are not right because that's how I am. And that's what a lot of people do. They base scripture off themselves. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. Because they want people to be more like them than more like Christ. I was I had misunderstanding with Paul so tall, so long. Like, hey, Paul is acting like he God. And then I started realizing, no, Paul is acting like Christ. He's trying to walk like Christ. He's trying to be a model citizen of a follower of Christ would be. Oh, I understand now. You know, Christ was single. And then Paul was like, I'd rather you be like me. And he was single. But he's like, then he said, everybody got their own gifts now. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If you read that scripture, man, it'll help you so much. It helps me so much. You put your trust in God. You really try to live by that word as best of your ability. If you keep calling on God, he's going to help you do so. He is. I just want y'all to know that. You're going to have people come against you. People are going to call you false because you follow the truth. They're going to call you false because of the way the gospel is preached in regards to other people. So they're going to look at you trying to do it correctly and say you are a false prophet. And you are a liar. You're not living by scripture. When most of the time it's the teachers that's teaching them and the people they follow after who are telling them differently from what scripture tells them. You rarely hear preachers talk about spiritual gifts anymore. Healing. Casting out devils. You know, all this stuff that we so much so much focus on material things that we think that's what blessing is. We think that's the underlying. We think we give our life to God so we can have a 12 cars. And then one of your family members car break down. And you're like, man, I can't really help you right there. Wow. That's why you got 12 cars. Or you want the 14 bedroom, 14, 5,000 square foot house. And if somebody lacking in your family, you're too busy trying to judge them instead of trying to help them come in. 
To whom much is given, much is required. You understand? Think about that. To whom much is given, much is required. So if God increase you, you have to do more. You know, they look at Solomon like he was the best king, smartest king ever. But Solomon was putting in work to build the Lord's house and his house at the same time. He didn't get ignorant until he got older. And he started forgetting God. Do you understand, people? Wake up and smell the coffin. Jesus tells us how to do things. He tells us how to pray. Why are you not praying the Lord's Prayer? Because your church ain't. <laughs> hey, hey. Your church ain't. That's why. I remember growing up and there was a church that my pastor used to get up there. And uh, our Father. That's how I learned the Lord's Prayer. Not through the Bible. I learned it through my preacher. Because they used to sing it. And I learned the Lord's Prayer before I learned anything else. I didn't know the significance of it back then. But now I know the significance of it now. It's important in your walk with Christ. The 10 are important. But the, uh, everything that's in the Bible is important. But the Lord's Prayer is important. Why? Because Jesus said it. Not because Stone Cold said so. Because Jesus Christ said so. And like I said, you can read your Bible. You'll see two different instances. One on the Sermon on the Mount, and then in one of the other books, his disciples asked him how to pray. And he told them the exact same thing. So it's not like most people will. This is what he mean. He mean pray like this. No, he mean pray exact this. Because <laughs> if he wanted you to pray like this, the two prayers would have been different. He said pray exactly like this. So I just heard people break it down. Christ, when he gave you the Lord's Prayer, he ain't saying you got to. No, he's saying this is how you pray. Am I saying how David prayed and the prayers he put up there were wrong? No. These are prayers he did when he was behind closed doors. He was being pursued by his enemies and things like that. You're going to have moments like that. You are. But your main prayer. And then guess what? David made the Lord is my shepherd. The very, very simple prayer to the first Lord's prayer. And Jesus had made it better. Have a blessed day.